Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on PLOS TV Africa and to a full house today. Our program today is a healthy mix of investigation, analysis, diagnosis and solutions. Treasure is looking into the state of trust in Nigeria. Her diagnosis holds a few surprises. Chuka takes us on a ride down familiar territory, whereas his analysis is anything but familiar. Liberus adds salt and pepper to the theater of absurdities we call the NDDC probe. His solution, believe it or not, he's calling for more fainters. And for Akene, um, she'll have some of us squirming in our seats as she undertakes a probe of our own. She investigates a certain Nigerian masculinity and the predatory instinct. No fainting, please. That brings us back to me. I'm examining the Igbo apprentice system and proffering it as a homegrown solution to what ails us. This edition promises to deliver in full with no loose ends. Join us after the break. They say, if it isn't broke, then why fix it? So today, I'm going to be talking about the Igbo apprentice system, or what we otherwise call the Omune economics. So if you're Igbo or have Igbo friends, I'm sure you know of a certain cousin or friend who at some point, either due to financial difficulties, usually, or due to some other factor, opted to go and start learning work as an apprentice trader with some established relation, either in any of the big cities in Nigeria, on Echa, Bar, Lagos, Newi, and so on. And how today that friend or cousin we used to look down on is now a very prosperous businessman or woman. There may be exceptions to this rule, but usually you find that they're all doing work pretty well these days. So the Igbo apprentice system, or Imo Afia as we call it, if you're Igbo, as we call it today, has become perhaps the most important social and economic factor which has helped the Igbos overcome the incredibly social and economic challenges that was brought on by the brutal civil war which devastated the region and cost over three million lives. Today, it is said that Newi, and in fact the whole of Anambra State in general, they have more millionaires per square kilometer than any other place in Africa. So, so why is that so? My advocacy this week examined the role of this system, this Imoafia system as we call it and calls for some kind of modernization of this, this system and formalization within the fabric of our national educational system. There's an interesting video, I don't know how many of you have seen it, of a TED talk by Robert Newitt, where he said that, and I quote him now, he says, I can say with almost certainty that the Igbo apprenticeship system that governs Alaba International Market is the largest business incubator platform in the world. Now, going further, another big friend of mine, someone I really admire, Professor Ndubisi Akekwe of techedia.com, describes this Umaya system as the best business framework in the world. According to Professor Akekwe, the Igbo apprenticeship system is characterized by creativity, innovation, passion, dedication, critical thinking, determination, resilience, and independence. Indeed, this attributes are essentially the basic building blocks for producing any successful entrepreneur, not just in Nigeria, but indeed anywhere in the world. Which is why I believe there is an urgent need for government, especially state governments, to recognize and encourage the system and even incorporate it into the formal education system as some type of a factory or trade school program. Whilst the Umaha system, Umaha system may have been driven by this Igbo mutual aid economy, something we call the Omunna Omunna economy, as a way that just especially after the Civil War to re reduce the suffering after the Civil War, and it does have some defects, chief of which Professor Ekekwe again described as a focus on preventing poverty 
by mass scaling opportunities for everyone, but it's simply not geared to building conglomerates or otherwise big businesses. So basically, the IMWA Health System, with the objective of settling the apprentices, end up in some ways reducing or dividing the market share of the master or ga for his trainees. According to uh, a friend, Professor Kekwe, he, he says that assuming the master holds 3% market share in a specific market, by the time he's done training his apprentice, he might be holding on to only 2% because he has to release 1% to his boys. Um, so this focus on reducing poverty, which heralded the Igbo apprentice system, is very different from the Western idea of business education, which focuses on the accumulation of market share. So this apparent defect may be the reason you will not see any big conglomerate in Aba or Nietzsche and, and so on and so forth. But the apprenticeship system itself is not designed to have just one Iroko, but many trees in the forest. And that's the beauty of it. But another challenge of this Umwaha system is the perception, despite its success, that is a program for persons who either due to lack of finance in the family or, is, or doesn't like education. So there's this perception persist that it's no longer as attractive for young people these days. Um, but the reality is that it promises to be if a plank on which we can help to reduce poverty, and we've seen this result in the Navy and other places in the East, uh, transfer skills, and indeed help us to, to create jobs. So that's basically um, what I want us to, to talk on this, on this show today. Yeah, um, I, I like your advocacy, but um, there's one thing I feel is missing. Um, you said we can use it for education, but you really, because for the first person listening to you, um, you really didn't now merge you know, the apprenticeship system, which is good, to how we can use it to enhance our education. You know, so for me, that's basically what um, I feel is missing. But um, um, also, uh, because I have a lot of Igbo friends who are, you know, all millionaires, you know, starting from, um, they started well out from this apprenticeship mm -hmm. system. Um, and then also, I also want to disagree that, um, um, one of the disadvantages you talked about that um, you know you can't build conglomerate from it. That's mm -hmm. not true, mm -hmm. because also you have situations where you know the master you know would have trained more than fifty boys, and the master keeps growing by investing mm -hmm. in his um, you know um, uh, apprentice, yeah. and and so it gets to a time the master becomes the big iroko that all the other apprentices takes from. I know some people who. You know, they, their masters can do 50 containers from China, but they manage to do one or two. And then sometimes they even key into the containers from the master, yeah. but yet they are sustaining theirs. You know, so, but the only difference why we think it is it cannot be big is because we are really not invested in it. If we invest in it, and, and for me, like, take education, for example. You, you train people, you take them to NYC and it ends there, so you leave them. There's nothing to hold on to, unlike the Igbo apprenticeship. They train, and then they give you a platform to start something. And, and so, if we invest in it, like when you train from NYC, you divide your core members into groups, and so okay, for these ones that are going into medical feed, this is how we're going to enhance you, so that you become masters in this feed for these ones that are going into okay, think, manufacturing or whatever, this is how we're going to en enhance you. Okay. So when you do that, before you know it, you would have grown you know, smaller markets, and some persons would definitely be big markets. So mind you, some will branch out okay. to let, other let, things. Let's, let's uh, take, let's, let's, yeah, please go on. Just, just a quick one. Let, let, you know, I, mean, I, I agree with you that I may not, I mean, just a couple of words in this, in this, in this advocacy. But, but I, I touched on the fact that you, you can do what I call factory or trade schools. And that, that's a formalization yeah, aspect of it. And I think that, I mean, we didn't, I didn't have enough time okay, uh, to do that, but, but I yeah. Think, I think it's about time we remapped our knowledge uh, economy, as it were, in yeah. Nigeria. Uh, we've taken for so long, like I, I watched the TED talk you, you referred to in that advocacy, and I saw how this, this new it man um, did a comparison and, and then started from Adam Smith and you know, worked his way to the Igbo apprenticeship. And I really quite like that quote he, he talked about. So then, now we have someone out there who's saying this is fantastic. So then where do we go from here? I think 
the best thing for us is to change our curricula, our, our educational curricula. As Emeka has said, after NYC, then what? Then before NYC, we should, we should have by now stopped A for Apple because we, we really don't grow apples here. Yeah. So we should have more local mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. in our education curricula. Mm -hmm. And then going from there, this apprenticeship system, why don't we, I join him to, to, to demand and ask and request for this to be integrated. Okay, okay. I mean, you the know. other thing I'll say is, because I'm not even sure if it's, uh, yes, I get what you're saying, have more indigenous content. Right. But I think what the uh, apprenticeship system says to me is, it has to do with a robust training. It has to do with a training that instills discipline in the apprentice. Because I listened worse. to Cosmos Madika, and yes. one of the things he emphasized, and he even dared to say that if you have an apprentice and you have a university graduate, and even if you gave the university graduate a head start, the apprentice will catch up and overtake because they have that practical knowledge, they have that discipline that's been inculcated into them. And that's what I feel even in our education sector, take, even, take away the practical side. Take that robustness, that thoroughness <laughs> is lacking. And yeah. even when you come to our apprentices today, our apprentice today, like I had a young boy yesterday chain my tire. I saw this boy, he's not even up to my waist. I said, how old are you? He said he's 13. I was smiling at him. The guy finished changing my tire. I even dashed him extra thinking I was so impressed. Only to go down the road, the tire of card. And then the, <laughs> someone told me that that boy, that nut, I was lucky that the car didn't come but the boy is running around changing tires and he should be under a supervisor. Right. Off your mic, off your But he's already, mic. you know, he's okay. already, he's already. It's okay, it's okay. okay. <laughs> off your mic. Under a mic, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying to myself, we, we're not thorough. You know, a lot of our artisans are not thorough. Yeah. They're too impatient, they're too greedy. Yeah. Too. And they that's why we we'll go, go and get quickly. someone from Cameroon to tile our house. Because we don't follow the process through to the end. Which and that's do. what I, I want us to inculcate in anything we do. Sorry, yes. Chuka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. They they complete the cycle abroad. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm outside Nigeria, mm. and um, that's our African, yeah, West African uh, neighbors. Said. Yes, and we don't. So, um, but yes, I agree with what everybody has said about changing our curriculum or at least expanding it to include something homegrown. Yeah. We're trying to do it in architecture as well, where we're trying to, you know, we're we're not we're not we're not going to behave like we don't know how to do buildings, you know. We do, we do, you know, so, yeah. So, anyhow, um, apprenticeship speaks of stewardship, and a good stewardship is surely a basis for trust. Treasure has more to say on the matter um, after this break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Yes, Emeka, interestingly, as a people, we are rich in the currency of trust. I'll tell you more as I speak on the state of trust in Nigeria. Well, John C. Maxwell, my coach, globally acclaimed author, motivational speaker, and a trainer of, leader, trainer of leaders said, and I quote, relationships are built on the solid ground of trust. I'll say trust is not arbitrary. It's an intentional foundation for all relationships. The Edelman Trust Barometer is an annual global trust and credibility online survey conducted by Endelman Intelligence to test how well people trust the institutions of government, business, media, and non-governmental organizations to do what is right. Now with two million respondents and over 400 companies on the survey, I think it's some survey worth paying attention to. And here is why the theme for the global 2020 Edelman Trust Barometer survey report is competence and ethics. In terms of percent of predictable variance, 76% of respondents in Nigeria valued ethics above competence. 
It made me wonder, are Nigerians rooting for an ethical revolution as a younger Walisha Inka sang decades back? I know if you remember the song, Etika Revoeti, Etika Revolisha. Now that report takes a critical look at the state of trust in Nigeria. The general picture from that report shows that Nigerians are very trusting people. Uh, businesses scored highest with 91%, followed by NGOs at 87%, the media at 84%, while the institution of government is the lowest. Only 55% of Nigerians trust the government. It is still above the global average, though, because South Africa has the lowest level of trust in government in the last six years. Um, that's in Africa. Given the ongoing drama in the fight against corruption in Nigeria, I find this report quite fascinating. And there are three points I'd like to zero in on in the Trust Barometer report. One, that CEOs are the most trusted amongst society leaders in Nigeria. 87% of Nigerians surveyed said they trust CEOs more to address our national challenges. Another 90% said CEOs should take the lead. And 82% said they want CEOs to speak up on critical issues such as climate change, immigration, impact of automation on jobs, and so on. Secondly, in the media, privately owned media ranked highest with 90%, followed by search engines at 83%, and social media at 75%, while traditional media came a distant fourth at 75%. It means that Nigerians find search engines more reliable for news and information than traditional media. Then 57% respondents, however, say they fear fake news or false information being used as weapons. In other words, weaponization of stories. And then thirdly, while CEOs scored highest in the trust barometer at 87%, Journalists came second at a close 86% and religious leaders at uh, third position. And I suppose that Kene and I are in the right profession after all. We are now shining stars. Curiously though, in spite of the bashings against religious leaders lately, they are at a comfortable third. Across sectors in this report, retail leads with 90% 90, 90 followed by telecoms with 89%, entertainment with 88%, and food and beverages at 87%. I find that also curious because 86% of Nigerian employees want to be heard and be part of planning in their organization. And it reminds me of Barbara Kellerman in our book, Followership, where she talks about leading from below, how those with less power, less authority and influence have their ways of impacting those who have more. So, well, if you have been importing expatriates from abroad, here is the 2020 memo. Your subordinates do have some arrows in their quiver and some workplace, workplace tactics and strategies that may make the difference. So, moving forward, include them in your planning. You know, for me, I'm, I'm really amazed at the very generous marks of trust, the high level Exactly, of trust. exactly. Um, I mean... It's just uh, why I was laughing. No, no, no. I mean, I, it, I'm are very trusting people. Um, it will take I, a lot. You know, this is, this, there's, there's an innate bias when surveys like this are, do, are done. People very often do not tell you how... many how, people they... No, no, how they really feel. Oh, really? And we've seen that in so many, in the last election, especially in, in Western countries, where people tell you what you, the researcher, what they want, believe you, they want you to, to and hear. And then they shock you. And, they, and then shock you with the reality. Mm. And I say this because in our general conversations, just us sitting here now, and I do this survey, let me ask mm. you, mm. I'm going to start from you, Treasurer. Mm. Yeah. Do you trust, how much do you trust your government? No, I don't. The government is no, no, other. The government was 55 like percent. Yeah. Yeah. neutral. No, no, no. So I'm saying, how, 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 you know, so who are those 55? How much would you raise them? <laughs> would you give them up to 55? For me, I wouldn't even so, give so them. Here, with, the, with the recent um, happenings yeah, cool. here, you know, in the here country, is, I wouldn't here, even Here lies them. where um, election results are written and people are announced. And that's the basis on which government is built. Is, is democracy is how you get elected leaders. And if that, if you've lost trust mm. in that, I'm amazed that they're even getting 55%. Yeah, yeah, so I, am I. I, I would, I would say so this. Am I. And I'm saying this even for media, when mm. majority <laughs> of the people reading on the street will say, ah, I don't believe them. So now you're, they're getting 89% or yeah. it's, 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 
Yeah, but I'm, I'm amazed. That but but I'm not saying. But I'll take it. Micro I'll, level. I'll, Traditional media is seventy five percent, but yeah, privately owned. I'll, I'll take it though. Yes. I'll, I'll accept it. Yeah. And I'll I'll use appreciate it. it that they yeah. bother to gather and collate those figures. Uh, I mean, how, the point how, for me is, is quite uh, the one point I can take away from that. Thank you for that. It was useful. Is is essentially that the private enterprises should do more in terms mm -hmm. of governance. Um, and I was looking at you know. So recently, I was talking to a lady who is very uh, intellectual and she's involved in a lot of the economics of the running of the country. And she was saying, look, she doesn't know why we don't do concessioning more of our infrastructural development. And concession, yeah. I thought, I said, oh, it's concessioning like privatization. I said, no, you give them a, you know, like for example, you give someone a contract to do a road and then they claim it back through toll fees for a period and then you get your road back. So it's a kind of give and take and it's purely business. Because when I look at businessmen who are successful in Nigeria, it's clear we know what to do. We know what to do when mm. the money is at stake. But when we come to government things, we forget the profit and loss okay, margin. Is and we start his head. Head. And I, 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 so, so why not just give these businessmen they, a little rope to no. handle the things that they do, just monitor them and let them deliver? Because governments Be, are not capable of I doing agree. No, but because Look at the road um, Dangote is you know, putting together somewhere. Um, you know, look at what Tony Lumelu has been able to do with, with you know, this sort of apprenticeship, sort of, you know, growing new entrepreneurs yeah. and if you compare that with what government has been trying to do with the what is it called now? Is government no but but once it's but, government there's just some sort of but the uh, truth the truth of the matter is that i i'm, I'm shocked that people I'm, I'm, shocked that, <laughs> I'm shocked that people actually trust their ceos of private companies right. this 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 country runs no, on really? government the government is basically what runs this country <laughs> So when you see a successful CEO of a private company, he's probably in bed with government. So um, I can't. These guys are so skeptical. Yeah, I can't. Or is divorce, it cynical? I cannot separate the two. Mm -mm. So um, I don't see how you can trust your CEO when he's hobnobbing with your governor, and you have, you have no idea what they're discussing. He's hobnobbing with the minister the next day, and they're coming up with all sorts of things. And uh, in in effect. Most CEOs are enriching themselves through government, and contract. that's the truth. Yes, I, the CEOs have become too rich in this country, and it follows that it's not their salary and it's not their condition. Who of then can you trust? Chuka? So there must be something more than <laughs> Who that. Who then can you trust? See, uh, yeah, nobody. From <laughs> these um, these trusts um, rating first and foremost, who are they talking to? Uh, what's the percentage of the people that we're talked to? Um, that would determine because. Also, even sitting here, we and then we also relate with people on the street, <laughs> and then you know what's out there. And then, um, some of these, like Chuka said, some of these um, CEOs, you know, in, in the biggest business in Nigeria is government, yeah. and, and so anybody that is doing well in Nigeria must have some form of relationship with that's why somebody an entrepreneur can leave his business and go into government yeah. if you want to be a rich man in other societies you go into entrepreneurship but if you want to be a rich man here you go into business uh, government, government or you business. have a relationship with government and then coming to your suggestion Concession. what happens those concessions that they are yeah. big they are big they are big contracts contract. we have Which concessions does. <laughs> we have we have concession toll gates before <laughs> and at the end of the day yeah. Tina, we are still concessioning mm. At the end of the day, people just make money from it. Go to Oyo Airport. I talked about it here. Yeah. Somebody's there collecting 1,500 naira from every traveler. It's a concession. But at the end of the day, what comes out of it? Nothing. So this CEO sits down there. They're looking for government patronage. The moment Emeka goes back into government, his friends, if not sink, since he left government, will be sending congratulatory message to him. <laughs> Are we off my mic now? Off so that, the uh, mic. <laughs> <laughs> Has the <laughs> There's no trust left. All right, from solutions to analysis and more solutions after the break. And in a matter of fact tone, Chuka gives us a grim diagnosis. He says Nigeria is on fire. Wow, Chuka. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it, it does. It does. It does. It does. I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The game of charades effectively ends once the secret is out. It's been game over for a while now. So I'm talking about ticket to ride. Now, many will never receive the invitation to treat. Some lobby to secure an invitation because it's one hell of a party. Affectionately referred to as Nadem Dem Commission, NDDC, which is actually Niger Delta Development Commission, like all other specially created cash vehicles, is an invitation to treat. From the early days as Umpadek till now, it has been a channel for siphoning money meant specifically for accelerated development of the marginalized and disregarded Niger Delta region of Nigeria. With the current probe ongoing at the National Assembly, it would seem that jail terms and forfeiture of assets await a whole lot of people, including members of parliament, ministers of Niger Delta, executives of NDDC past and present, and lastly, government godfathers. The theft here is nationwide. The narrative being spun is that being spun is that people of the Delta who happen to act as figurehead top executives are stealing from their own. This propaganda originating from where I do not know is false. No wonder other regions of the nation search for ideas for creation of similar regional cash vehicles. The theft figures we have heard run into billions of dollars. Girlfriends supply power to the commission. The minister accused of sexual harassment of the female ex-managing director, Joy Nunez, who acknowledges that she in fact slapped the minister, Godswill Akpabio, a former governor and senator. He in turn alleges that Joy Nunez gives away the game that nothing much is expected to come out of the current malaise. Now, Akpabio of Niger Delta is not working alone. He was appointed by the president. The presidency cannot feign ignorance of the goings on at NDDC nor can the governor of our de facto Bureau de Change Central Bank, Godwin Emefiele. Nigeria is on fire. The issue is not sectional. It is not about the wickedness of Niger Delta politicians to their own people. It is about the corruption and wickedness of politicians from all parts of the country who have been partying at NDDC for all these years. It's a micro microcosm of the theft of Nigeria by Nigerians the greed of contractors who collude with the politicians, of the average Nigerian who gets excited at the mention of cash vehicles and scramble for a piece of it. So I call on Buhari to immediately suspend the major actors here to prepare to subpoena past top executives of the NDDC and the Ministry of Niger Delta. Akpabio should be removed forthwith and placed under special investigation. Those in the Nigeria police force who tried to abduct Joy Nunia before claiming that they do in fact now need her to be handed over should be suspended. Both the Inspector General and the Rivers Commissioner initially claimed not to have known anything about the failed kidnap. I'm praised to Nye Samwike, who acted as a governor and chief security officer of his state by protecting Nunia from sponsored terrorism. Um, Chuka, I will take it up from where I stopped in the last uh, advocacy, yes, uh -huh. so that I can drive home the point properly. Right. All of these uh, funds, billions that they are calling, were contract awarded to CEOs. Yeah. <laughs> CEOs. Yeah. Government would call a CEO. That's why somebody who ordinarily owns a business, is growing a business as a CEO, is given government appointment, he goes to church to do Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because he believes he's at home to chop. Chop, yeah. And, and so, on, on this whole issue, what so, sorry, sorry, let me just interject me. on that point. Because I know somebody who wanted a contract and had put in a, a template of what he was going to charge. And the government official says, double it. And because he refused to double it, he went and found someone who would. So the right CEOs are not being given That's, because they're looking for the CEOs who so add it. So but carry on, you, carry on. That, you can what, tag what everyone. I'm saying, that does not mean that there is no 5%. Like somebody said, those who are waiting to steal from government are more than the ones stealing it in government now. At the moment. Yes. And, and so, yes, you have a few percentage of people who would say, no, my conscience would allow me do this. But what's the percentage? Even some of them, their I'm family... I'm not making point that the government are selecting the them. kind of CEOs that they Even want to Even their family won't forgive them. 
And that is why, if you, you have, don't know if you've heard a statement like, oh, ah, ah, is a don't mind that guy, Jerry, that our brother that was given opportunity uh, and he refused he to chop. Say. He didn't want anybody to chop. Where is he today? Where is he today, yeah. You, you hear statements like yeah. that, you know? And so now you hear Akpabio. Akpabio is talking about what had happened in Niger Delta before the IMC. The Senate is talking about what is happening even with the IMC. This is an organization that is supposed to come clean the urgent table. But here, their hands deep in it. And Nigerians are divided. Yeah. Some for Akpabio and some for the lawmakers. And, and so, until we have a head, thank, thank, you, thank, thank you, you said, uh, Boar is not aware. For me, I think the man is aware, but he pretends not to be aware. And so, until you have a head mm. who believes that, look, you don't need to even hear these things before you whip everybody into line, we'll continue in these circles. Yeah of madness. Mm -hmm. Mine is that I just feel that we've really reached rock bottom and we're going below that now. Mm -hmm. When you're having to hail Mwike as a knight in shining armor, it tells you that we're really in a game of thoughts <laughs> exactly. now. Because he has to be the mouth. hero. No, and, no. And, but, but let me even make yeah. a point. Yesterday, bold wicked, bold the, the, wicked. the same yesterday, yes. I, I had an adventure yesterday, yeah. whilst the boy was fixing my tire, I saw a young boy, he couldn't have been more than, what, 20 something? He came out with two armed military men on a jeep, several of them. This boy's jeans were sagging. He was holding a, a bottle correct keg of Jack Daniels and swaggering. These it's are the people that now. governments are empowering. No, because if you keep, father, no, because father. whoever, whatever, government is, is, because you're talking about, um, what's this, uh, entrepreneurship and um, what's the word now, Imwahia and training up. This is what this system is grooming. And so the next generation are people who believe in getting their money, making, this is the kind of thuggery that survives in Nigeria. And it's very sad to me. Because and when I look at all this system, it's not hard to do the right thing. I, I watched a video recently of a Singaporean head of state who was saying the only way they dealt with corruption once and for all was they made an example of the key guy, put him in prison, then it stopped. So we know what to do. We, we know what to do. But we don't want to. But the truth is, the that everybody basically out. needs to go because the president is accountable. Can I yes. say, all of can them I, are can accountable. Can I say something that the, um, the road to political power is paved with corruption? So um, whether it be the president or the senator, the road, the, the Everywhere process. Everywhere in the world? No, no, no especially, it's, it's usually, yeah. it's usually, it's worse here. Mm. The road to the Asu Rock yes. is paved with, you know, people. The system The system, it. yes. And so if you look at how Nigeria is, is set up, um, fundamentally it's set up to, to, to sort of nod to people with power. Whether, whether that power will be legitimate government power or whether that power will be power acquired through others' force. It doesn't yeah? matter. It doesn't matter. Or the threat of it or the amount of money you have yeah. to buy power. power. And so, so, you know, if you look at the patronage system in which the leadership comes up by, you know, look at the elections. It was a lot of um, money went in, a lot of force was used, a lot of abuse was in. Right. So, and, and it helped to bring this current system in power. So how do you dismantle it without dismantling the, your, the, the base on I which mean, you ascended? you're fighting ascended? the system that threw exactly. you up. So it has to be a leader who decides to sacrifice himself, himself in that process mm -hmm. to get to that, to that point. Buhari is not looking like he's up to it. I, I, I cannot no. speak for him, but I'm saying that the, the reality you is that... You don't need to speak for him. The reality, we all see it. The reality is that... The kind of leadership that you, you need now is the kind of leadership that says, you know, I, I, I'm ready to burn the bridge that brought me here and mm -hmm. erect a new one, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't care. Because the system is cancerous. Yes, and, uh, yes exactly. So he needs to cut it. But, you know, the fact is... He's not aware. Yeah, because now look at uh, Akwabio. He's able to hold a gun to all their heads because they all know that they're all implicated in the What, in what the I contract. find, no, what I find quite uh, yeah, he says baffling. All of them in the House of Assembly have contracts. Okay, now what I find now. baffling is that since this uh, theater of the absurd that we witnessed earlier in the week, mm. um, I'd expected the Niger Delta youths would be up in arms and up in... No when I say up in no, arms, no, I don't no, mean no, that, so you know, violence. The, the, but the but ones that demonstrated in Abuja that were massacred, what did we do to protect them? To protect them, yeah. Mm. The ones that were massacred in Abuja, calling for the yeah, release yeah, of yeah. Ezra Zaki yeah. by yeah, the yeah. police, the people that we pay to protect us. What did we do? Yeah, but this is a new. People? This is this is a new development. You recent development. You'll expect that the people will start talking. I mean, the. I don't know what you're talking about. Talking in about. Then the Niger Delta, but it looks like everywhere just just went quiet. 
Yeah, because like, maybe like what Chuka is saying, they have, they're still thinking that like, even if we get a trickle, it's better than nothing. They're you know, not they getting any trickle. Look <laughs> at what, what the images of the Niger Delta. Because I saw a newspaper have. headline that said, you know, they're not ready to disband that whole NDDC, mm. you know, so they're still very much, they, they feel that they have a stake. Let it still be coming. Then we can investigate. Nothing is trickling down to the yeah. people there. As we call out the hidden agenda behind our politics, aren't we glad we don't have to guess what's on your mind? Seydou's presentation on a spiritual solution to Nigeria's quandary continues to spark some discussion. Melissa Burdett says, Ekene, there is only one God. Ogun, Shango are not God. They are men. We know their father and mother. It's just like Abraham and Jacob. These people did a great job and people started worshipping them, just like how people are worshipping Holy Mary and asking her to intercede for them. I think it is wrong to be comparing these great men, our ancestors, with the almighty God that created heaven and earth and all things embedded in it. Well, Melissa, it may well boil down to a case of each to their own on this one. Whereas Black Sun Horizons 44 Black Horus says, Christianity, as was stated, is watered down, concealed solar worship, mixed in, mixed in with some Egyptian and African spirituality. Mithraism, Greek, Roman culture, all the characters from Eve to Samson to Jesus are simply Greek mythology disguised. Eve is Pandora, Samson is Hercules, Jesus is Serapis and Zeus. Like I said, each to their own. However, do tone down the hostility in your comments if you want us to continue to acknowledge them in the future. Festus Okwekwe says, such a delightful show of brilliance, intelligence, and critical thinking skills. Well done to you and your team. Thank you, Festus. So advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, the advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Next up is Libros, who interestingly is on a similar ride with me. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. In the words of my friend and brother, Ajima Ene, a true son of Niger Delta, the current probe of the NDDC by the House of Rep Committee on Niger Delta is just the available Nigeria series for July 2020. By August 2020, a new series will be released. I will move on to that one while we consider this old one as old and boring. And in preparation for that, more fintas wanted. The state of squalor in our country, Nigeria, can best be captured in a drama series called How Nigerians Underdeveloped Nigeria or How Leaders of the Niger Delta Underdeveloped the Niger Delta. While we are inundated with massive stealing going on in government in Nigeria and the FBI declaration of six Nigerians wanted for fraud, some other Nigerians did do our country proud abroad. A Nigerian PhD student in Japan, Ken Nanweke, drew global attention when he returned the post he found containing huge cash in Japan. Again, a Nigerian coach, Undubisi Ebo, wins a Benia title and qualifies his team, Tirana, for Champions League. That's all for the good news. But back home here, how do you explain to anyone that in Nigeria, professors of medicine are employed to undertake the job of auditing? Why the trained accountant are nowhere near the auditing desk? Why the man who offends? You employ a medical doctor to carry out the job of a project engineer. Anyway, 
Minister Akpabio said NDDC project is COVID-19. No wonder they are surgically sharing the money into their pocket, including the ones meant for scholarship. How do you train EFCC staffs abroad only to bring in a policeman to head the commission? Yet you think corruption can be fought that way. I sit down and they look. You train directors in CBN to aim towards the peak only to bring in commercial bank MD to head central bank, to head central bank, and yet expect the same government to impartially regulate this bank. We lie. You train career diplomats over the years only to appoint politicians as ambassadors and expect a great image abroad. You must be joking. You recruit custom officers who hope to rise to the pinnacle someday only to be headed by a retired army officer. No wonder custom is not about money but less about professionalism. If you look everywhere in our national life, these things are replicated and you can even remember some. Yet we close our eyes to it and expect a great country. No wonder there's hopelessness everywhere in the country. Between June and July, we just opened the books of EFCC and NDDC and the stench oozing from this agency can send coronavirus back to China. To the extent that some are already fainting, what now happens if we decide to open the books of NNPC, CBN, FRSC, ICPC, Police Service Commission, the Judiciary, the National Assembly, the various ministries, parastatus, agency, including the presidency, we will not only put off the mic, but we even the generator will go off. I can assure you that if we dare go in that direction, a lot of people will not only faint, but fainting will become a course of study in our university, probably to be taught by veterans in fainting, like Professor Pondai, fainter in chief. Um, Senator Fentai Meritus Dino Melai, Chief Ulisametu, Pro Fenta, and even the Sifia Pain Fenta, His Excellency Peter Ifayoshe, former governor of Equity State. However, we still need more Fentas as the absurdity and impunity is outrageous. I would therefore advocate that President Buhari should be informed that we need more Fentas by petitioning the National Assembly to investigate the ICPC the NMPC that has been alleged to spend almost trillions of naira without yielding result, the EFCC, the Nigerian police, the armed forces, and the security budget since 2015, the National Social Insurance Trust Fund, the CBN, the FRSC, even the SCDC, Ministries, Parastatus Agency, MPA, NIMASA, even the National Assembly and the Presidency need auditing. By so doing, we will not only be getting more fentas, but it will be obvious that there will be no hiding place for those who help themselves to our commonwealth. Who knows? Some people around the president might also have taken courses in fetting. After auditing, we must also make sure we show those involved the way to jail. Ekene, did you just tell me it's okay, I should put off my mic? <laughs> I better make a faint, Jerry. I think it is. <laughs> no, but you know, uh, leave us. Uh, please don't faint. Um, I, I just remember that the umpa deck that um, Chuka referred to just earlier. I read. I came up. I came across an article, 1998, and they titled it "The Orgy of Corruption." So even yeah. then, yeah. we're dealing with. So this yes. is like a replay of yeah. what has. So. All this fainting, all this probing and fainting, where does it lead us? Can I, can I Nowhere say, fast. Yeah, so what yeah. I'm trying to say is that, I'll just say this yeah. and I'll let you come in. My own is that if we go to 2023, and I know everybody keeps saying, is that all we can hope for? And anybody elects any more of these people back, whether APC or PDP, any familiar faces, we have ourselves to blame. Quite. That's all I have to say, because yeah. they've shown themselves I, to all I, I be don't think, incompetent. I don't think it's a, it's a question of parties. If okay. There was no 1998, it was not PDP. It was That's not, what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. one. No, no, so no, you no. mentioned oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's not about the parties. Mm. It's about the systems. Mm -hmm. um, look, the president, former President Jonathan had this thing where he said, do not put yam and goats together. Yeah. Yeah? It, it was simply alluding to the fact of, of processes. If you have a system where there's really no checks, no balances, yeah. um, I was going to go to that. you're going to have this thing. But didn't it's a, we have due process at some so, point? No, even after the due process, there must be... Uh, what you call monitoring and enforcement. Yes. So the system has broken down. Mm -hmm. let's, let's just face the reality. So whether you bring, whoever you bring, and wh wh when it's easy for you as a chief executive, I'm sitting in an office as a chief executive of a government agency, and I, the system allows me to get so away with yourself. this thing, you will do that. No, but um, I, 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 I suggest that the systems are there, but people are not working the system. So the point is, the because system of their goes own back to how payback. the people who, the, the system, see, the system starts from politics. Because politics will break down 
law and justice. It's the political process or the political system. Once that system has been compromised, then you cannot find justice, you cannot find any other thing to go. We, we saw during the 2019 elections, during the campaign, where a leader of a political party said, once you come over to us, all your corruption, all your sins, sins. All are, your sins are forgiven. Are forgiven. So, so that is a system. So because of politics, every other thing Everybody will move into was broken party. down. And then you compromise. So, so Akpabia himself, that we're talking about, was facing um, yeah, um, that's right. um, so how challenges. Do we, how do we and then, stop he, and then he, became, immediately he moved. He switched over. He switched over. His sins were forgiven. How do we it stop the system, system from being politi politicized then? It takes the leadership. I mean, I mean yeah. so, so, it takes so the leadership. my point is this. When you move to a point where there's massive institutional, the system is decayed to the point where someone, and, 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 and I say this not because... It is someone or some people we need to rise up. I mean, when, when we listen to the, the monumental fraud and you talked about it, it appears as if, oh, it's another TV series. Yeah. There'll be a next season, yeah. like yeah. you said, in yeah. another there's episode. There's always some drama anyway. But, but, you know, I'm afraid that it will continue like this, right. except two things happen. Uh -huh. We rise up right. as a population, yeah, yeah, we get fed up, and then or maybe, leader, it or, maybe a or a leader arises to make that change. Yeah, Either that, uh, if the people arise, it might it might not follow a process that you and yes. I yeah. can, okay. predict. can predict. Yeah. That's yes. the danger. Mm. Well, how will the people arise? Because if we go from what Libras, you know, said earlier, the people fuel this sort of this sort of system as well. Mm. If you get into into governance now, they're going to be expecting that you give the people something. So there's this expectation from the people that our son, our daughter, is there, and so we need this sort of our portion of the largesse, yeah. so the our portion of the of the national cake. Mm. So even the people need a change of orientation, which is why you are change advocating. of thinking. Yeah. Which is why you're advocating. Are we ever going to get out of this yeah, we, yeah. cycle? We, well, we'll just <laughs> we keep, on, keep on advocating. I have to yeah. believe that, yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm here. It will take decades. It will, well, I don't know if I'll go decades as far as that. Is a long time. I hope to be alive to see it. No fainting, I beg, Libros, is all I can say for now. I'm guessing we'll be needing some broad shoulders to take on my advocacy. Up next. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Okay, what society endorses may not always be in the best interest of society. We recently saw a spate of reported rape cases in the country leading to the Say No to Rape campaigns and the social media storm that often follows topical issues. In Anambra State, there were apparently 80 cases during lockdown alone. However, are we ready to address the culture that predates and even nourishes a sense of entitlement, which can lead to rape? Are we ready to take on what I would call the elephant in the room? I'm aware that rape is not distinctly a Nigerian problem. Nonetheless, since charity begins at home, I want to talk about a certain culture of Nigerian masculinity and the predatory instinct. According to one dictionary, a predator is an, any animal that lives by preying on other animals. From a human perspective though, a lot of predators would not identify themselves as such because society has made it socially acceptable and even cool to be predatory. I recently came across the expression, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And I wasn't referring to four-footed beasts. Go figure. Is it not this predatory instinct that results in the vulnerable amongst us being at the mercy of those supposed to protect them? In one context, it's the game of life, where women, sometimes men, or the vulnerable, are seen literally as fair game. In another context, it comes at a significant cost. 
Typically, those preyed upon are those, uh, often those with a weaker sense of self-assurance, or at least those who haven't learned to bluff it. Those who soon learn, albeit not soon enough, that openness is, as far as they're <laughs> concerned, an invitation to violation and abuse. We haven't even begun to address the subtle psychological uh, scars of sexual objectification amidst a largely patriarchal society. In other words, or in other societies, it has inspired the Me Too movement, whereas here, that movement has barely left first gear. I wonder why that is. Incredibly, to date, we have little or no clearly stated recourse in Nigerian law to sexual molestation in the workplace, believe it or not. A mature man once said, I have learned that to be a man, I don't need to see women as beings to be conquered. This conquest mentality, as I like to term it, applies in other areas of life too, and can be a two-way traffic between the sexes. Colleagues are not competitors, neither is your spouse. Subordinates are not there to serve us, neither are our children. The electorate are not objects of manipulation and exploitation and so on. That leaves a whole scope of other supportive relationships to be explored. Brave new world. For the erstwhile victims, my counsel is first, know and accept yourself. You don't need affirmation or validation from another, especially since we all are imperfect beings learning lessons in perfection. Then learn the signs of the predators and equally learn to look them in the eye without blinking. There is no need to apologize for not playing by their rules, even if it makes you seem uncool. So what? Finally, pass on the lessons you have learned from your education in survival so that others, aside from you, can have the empowering experience of surviving the predators amongst us. Uh, McKinney, I can I see you one. shaking your head. No, You're no, distracting no, me. Because, no, because <laughs> that right. was my quote. Yeah, I took Rise, it from him. Peter, yeah. kill I, and I, eat. I, I, yes, so. Exactly it wasn't, it wasn't about predatory. Mm. It was about, it was about, let me, let me explain it. Okay. You find out that if you are the cool guy, you, in Nigeria today, you are the cool guy who believes, oh, look, I need to, I have, I need to be loyal and um, to my partner. You go out with other guys, and then there are so many female who are seeking like your buffy. attention. So many of them. Mm. Because the attention is like one once asks, is the guy handsome? And what is the meaning of handsome? Is his hand holding something. Hey. And so me. once <laughs> your hand is holding something. <laughs> oh my word. And then the next thing is, ah, why relax? Why, why, this is, we are all here for you. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Yeah. And so the now, killing, in, 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 that's what I'm saying, the killing is your cash. The killing is your money. You use your money to kill what you eat. Okay. And, and so that's why you see, just the same way we are complaining that our young men no longer want to walk. And the same way you see young girls drive expensive cars, you know, you see young girls also live in big houses, paid for by men. They are not predicting on, on those female. Some of them are volunteers. They, on their own, they tell you they don't even... I met you a lady... what I don't like about Wait, let me this. finish. Yeah. I met a lady in Abuja who I was trying to fix a job for. And she was telling me why should she wake up by seven to go and be jumping to one office when she can sit down and a man will provide all that she needs. That's one mentality mm -hmm. also that we need also to try to change. So but if you now make it look as if, oh, yes, the men are... Taking, uh, advantage, of taking the women. advantage of the women. I think yeah, yeah. also I you think need to understand that women also yeah. are taking advantage of the fair men, enough, and then also making themselves look like objects. Fair you know, to be taken advantage yeah. or to be bought. A lady who presents herself as a commodity will be bought. Will be bought. Mm. Interesting. I, I, yeah. But you must know that there's there's some there's a shift in the way things used to be. Nowadays, we have a lot of women who have financial power much more than the, the, the guys, much more than the women. So what you said, I mean, the men, what, so what you said about you have more women driving expensive cars. They no, can, I'm not they talking about those it. ones who can afford it. Okay, okay. I'm not so, talking about the ones who can afford so, it. So, but what I don't like about that particular phrase, you rise know, is, yeah, rise, it's just that it's objectifying women. It is a lady. It's a lady that says, Peter, for every, rise, kill, and eat. <laughs> not even for, a man. There's always a as flip as side to everything. As, anyway. as long as there's corruption in this country, there will be rape. That's what, that's what I know. How do you mean? Um, well, they may, even they, in they, countries that don't have corruption, they no, have No, the kind of corruption we have, I mean. The way, the way we rise in life, um, where we don't care about anything except our goal, 
Okay. That's makes, a you, makes you have that instinct and you will apply it in other facets of your life. Mm -hmm. And that and so I can tell I can, I can tell you that mm -hmm. sex becomes one of the first the ones you, that that you will jump on to prove that 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 is Conquest. that you yeah that you know that you can do it in Abuja you can also do it with the women. Um, so it's the mindset is all you know intertwined. And and sadly I think also that modern life is causing you know I am one of those who don't agree. I think that women or men should should be decently dressed. And anybody who says it is not my dress that cost you to rape me, man or woman, mm. is missing the point, and is going to only lead to more of such things. What's every, the point? Every, What's every, the point they're missing? Every, the, the point they're missing is that it will make somebody want to rape you. So, so quite what frankly, then do we say so, about so, the so, minors so, who are raped? So, no, 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 no. We, I'm just stating a category. That's why I said okay. let's not remove a category, and then that's the one that could give us problems later. Dress up. Because if you don't, there are men that are going to take that as, a, as an invitation are, to treat. And, and, if, and if wild you're, men, if you're dressed, you dress no, 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 because there are wild men who can't control <laughs> themselves. Yes, That's it's not just that. And, it, yes. and, yeah, and, and, yeah. Vice, and, vi and vice versa. Mm -hmm. There are women right. also who will not control themselves okay, if a man presents himself stress. in a particular way. I, I think that um, we can't you know, shut down this, avenues. Can, as, as Americans would say, we, you can walk and chew gum. They're two different things. There's, yeah. there's, a, there's a point you raised about predatory, about rape and mm. sexual and violence entitlement, and entitlement. Right. There's also a point that uh, uh, Liberos raised about women. Uh, commoditizing themselves. Yes, <laughs> themselves. Yeah. And, and they're two, yeah. they, they, they're not, they're layered yeah. to it. And they're two, you know, as, as he said, they're people who, they're wild beasts mm. that look, appear to be human beings, even yeah. dressed in, in flowing nice agbadas, who are just animals. Um, and and le let's look at it from the point of view where the legal system is jeopardized by the corruption, yeah. which makes it exceedingly impossible for people who are victims to get justice. Mm -hmm. And that's the point that I think that needs but to be. Just before we wrap it up, yeah, um, um, uh, can I say something about sexual molestation in the workplace as mm. well, yeah. which is quite common in Nigeria yeah. today. Yeah. And nobody is fighting no. for no for anybody. Mm. Yeah. But it's there so are, prevalent. It's for. quite prevalent in the workplace. Well, and a lot of people are victims no. and just yeah. clueless as to what to do to get justice yeah. or to even some, talk about yeah, it. Yeah. So it's something we need it's to key. look yeah. at. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, the time will fail me to start even going that to because the exactly. study was done into back India to talk about and it. how patriarchy affects their spike. You know what, Libra is it's laughing. Linked. No, it, it, I, I would Libra. link it to a mindset, it's but a I know yeah, I agree with the Mecca. It is major layered. Problem. I agree. Yeah. There's several yeah. things to yeah. deal, yeah, exactly. but I wanted to I wanted to zoom in on one. Let's take one at a time. If you zoom in on one, you forget the others. No, no, it's okay. We have we will be back here same time next week. It's always like this. Over before we've even begun. Just as well, we get to do it again, same time next week. Fresh topics, no holds barred. Keep advocating with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Put Bye -bye. Up the mic, up the mic. <laughs> up the mic, up the no mic. No fainting. No five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.